describing the flush fit cannula system and the appropriate way to get everything set up for success, we're going to start with the standard shoulder knee length arthroscope for use inside the hip. And we're going to be starting by connecting uh, the bridge system over onto your standard arthroscope. We're going to be using the button side of the bridge system to go straight in position. And we're going to use the actual light cord of the bridge system as our guide for where we click this into position. The inflow outflow will now be just on the distal side of your light cord as in all standard arthroscopic setups. And a key point is to note that on the actual bridge itself, there are two sides to the bridge position. The first is an open U shape and the second has a chin-up bar style construct. Now that's gonna be important for later, but we're gonna use that as a means of securely attaching our flush fit cannula to this device. When we look at the actual obturator itself, you're gonna remember that we've just pointed out uh, this same chin-up bar construct, and if I roll this over, you're gonna be able to see the U-shaped construct. And the key is just to remember, there's nothing to really click into on this side, so we're gonna use that chin-up bar to hold the actual uh, flush fit cannula in position. I'm gonna show at this point the way that we take that flush fit cannula and give a quick side view so that it's very clear to understand that this is very nicely marked so that when you're in the operating room, you know exactly what to do. And when you're looking at the actual release mechanism, you can see that hook that might go over that little chin-up bar cutout that we've talked about earlier. When we look at the actual button itself, we're gonna be pressing towards the surgeon's hand side of that button and make sure that we get that levering to work to release. If we press on the other side, there's a safety feature that doesn't allow us to detect prematurely. When we look at the actual insertion on the obturator now, we know to choose the chin-up bar side of the obturator. We know to bring this uh, cannula down into position and the flush fit cannula then click into position. When it's time for us to go into the hip joint, we would then release this by a pressure back on the surgeon's side of the actual device, allowing us to easily withdraw. At this point, we would then bring our camera into position, and now we're going to really see the true features where this implement shines. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this down in the incorrect position where there's a U-shaped cutout, and turn that piece over to show the chin-up bar. And as we see, we slide right in position and we get that click. Now we need to look at the very important safety feature that really is the compelling reason to think about this instrument for safety. And that's the flush nature of the fit of the tip of this rigid can camera. Inside the softer cannula, we can really see here the protective features for the articular cartilage with the way this fits. It's important also to note that your standard working length uh, is available at 125 millimeters, but there's also uh, available longer options if those are needed. So when we're going to start with our standard arthroscopic, we're gonna go ahead and start in that anterolateral portal where this needle is positioned. The first move is to go down from the skin, in through the capsule, penetrating that capsule, but not plunging deep within the field. We're gonna remove the central needle obturator, and then we're going to be placing in the nitinol wire. The nitinol wire will go with two finger care so we don't place a lot of damage. We want to grip and press that in. We want to be very careful. We're going to hold that needle, hold that wire, and we're going to go ahead and just twist with what's called a Seldinger technique in the United States. Very typical for making central lines in the intensive care unit. The next we're going to take an 11 blade. What we tend to do is just move that nitinol wire safely without again plunging it into the hip joint. And we're going to go ahead and make a linear cut around the wire. What we'll then do is tend to go ahead and spread with a simple surgical instrument, hemostat or Kelly, so that we make sure that we're freely able to access down to the level of the deep iliotibial band. We'll show as we bring this flush fit into the tip of the wire, we simply hold the wire in position and we're gonna go ahead and twist stone push down to the level of the hip capsule. And as we work into that hip capsule, we're working with twisting. We don't wanna see bending or a lot of uh, excessive force. And this is all part of the spirit of keeping nice patient protection as we're moving forward. Next, we wanna go and connect the flush fit obturator into the cannula. And when we do so, we wanna make sure we have that chin up bar portion of the flush fit obturator aligned with the line on the flush fit cannula. And now we're ready to go ahead and instrument down the nitinol wire and into the hip joint itself. As we go down, we're gonna go ahead and hold that stable position. Again, it's twist stone push. We use the wire in the back to make sure that if we have the correct angle, that wire is gonna come easily in and out. If we have an incorrect angle, it's gonna be bound inside the cannula. And these are some principles that are very important for central compartment arthroscopic surgery. As we go ahead and place the cannula, we're gonna watch as we dilate and rotate. And we're ready now to go ahead and access the hip joint. Again, we're gonna go ahead and disengage the obturator by going on the surgeon's hand side of the device. And we're gonna go back 
and remembering that the uh, obturator uh, itself and the camera itself have a chin-up bar. We've got to align that chin-up bar with the line on the cannula so that we click right in. What you're going to see is that we've done a nice job of accessing. We go into the arthroscopic view. One thing to note, most of us, and, and this of course is the way our teams have done it as well, we start with a dry arthroscopic surgery. There's no arthroscopic fluid or injection before the surgery. And you can often see a small meniscus type appearance of blue of the flush fit cannula in the periphery of your uh, arthroscopic image. That's going to go away when the arthroscopic fluid enters into the field, not to worry. And we're going to go ahead and make as a second portal. This portal can either be the anterior portal, and if we do the anterior portal, our angle of approach is typically at about 45 degrees out of both planes, straight down into that anterior triangle position. We're going to see the actual needle penetrate. You'll see a little bit of movement first. And we're going to, again, for safe access, we're going to just use that like a trampoline effect and make certain that we're in the right position before we access into the hip joint capsule. Again, with two fingers, we're going to go ahead and go right into that capsule. You can see at this point that we have a nice safe access. We're not through the labrum. We're going to go ahead and instrument this one. I'm going to next take the nitinal wire. And now we're going to see the very same steps that we saw from the outside in from the inside out. And we're going to go ahead and place the wire down. And we're again being very careful as we move in and out with that wire not to jam the wire itself against the socket. We then slowly twist and remove the spinal needle right from the edge so that we have a perfect safe access. At this point, we'll then go back to the scan and repeat the same process from the anterolateral portal. With a knife, linear incision, we're going to spread down through the subcutaneous tissues. We then go ahead and take the obturator for the flush fit cannula, and we're going to go ahead and dilate again. We're going to keep moving that wire back as we enter the capsule. And as we get just about perched to get into the capsule, we're going to feel a little bit of a give as we enter in safely. So now that we're dilated through, we're going to go ahead and leave the wire in place. We're going to take the actual obturator out. We're going to fasten the flush fit into position and come down to make the second portal. And this, again, is the mid-anterior portal. What I'll do in this case is keep the tip of the wire in view in the arthroscope so that we know we're at the right angle and then that wire isn't burying deep into the hip. And a good assistant makes for a great case, and we can see how that steady hand is holding and giving us that view. Once we get to the actual capsule layer, there's two choices, and I'm going to show them in two ways. One way is to make what's called a all-inside approach, where we go right down over the wire and bring the whole camera, cannula and obturator inside all at the same time. This is probably some of the most risky with the traditional systems because there's going to be a rigid metal cannula coming right across the labrum in this case. Note how the flush fit does not create problems. Now there's also a second way of doing this, which I would advocate, which is to bring the tip of the obturator into the joint, take this wire out, we're going to take the surgeon's side of the tab and release it, we're going to leave that right in position while we bring down the capsule cut. And we bring this down right inside, and we can see it goes directly through that 5 millimeter flush fit cannula. The flush fit cannula itself is resting on the outer capsule. And we're making simple inside out moves to create a small, what's called periportal capsulotomy. And that will give us perfect amount of room to go ahead and replace the obturator, realign, click in position. It'll twist smoothly right into position. And then we want to leave that very soft flush fit edge of the flush fit cannula in place. We can see this is resting on the labrum. And one of the key portions here of safety is that the camera lens will not protrude longer than that flush fit cannula. So we know now our safe steps to switch the camera from the anterolateral to the mid-interior position, find the chin-up bar position, on the T-piece and click ourselves into position. We're going to go back and show, using our oblique, we're going to go back and show the original flush fit cannula. And again, there's no scalloping of the articular cartilage in this area with the flush fit cannula. We can back this cannula up and begin to make the second periportal capsulotomy. We're going to come down the anterolateral portal, right down the same pathway, entering into the hip, and we're going to make a small periportal capsulotomy 
to improve mobility. Even in pediatric cases, there's room for us to be safely accessing the hip joint, this particular specimen, less than 100 pound total body weight. We have enough room for our instrumentation. Now we're gonna go ahead and re-access the hip joint with the flush fit. Again, this has all been done dry so far. As we add inflow and outflow to the hip joint itself, we're gonna start to see these instruments function as they're intended in an aqueous environment. And you can see as the flush fit cannula goes across the articular cartilage, even in a friable specimen, you're seeing no iatrogenic damage. So we're gonna go back into the aqueous environment. We're gonna go ahead and look at the mid anterior portal and we're gonna just make intentional contact and show the forgiving nature of this flexible plastic against the articular cartilage, demonstrating no iatrogenic trouble with contact against the femoral head. It doesn't mean we strive to hit the femoral head, but we do want to make sure that we're knowing that if we have assistants or trainees that are driving the camera, we're going to be much more protected from any unwanted uh, injury. So now we have a two working portal access to the hip and we can proceed with uh, standard diagnostic or operative arthroscopy.